Today we're going to look at a very general version of an antiderivative you might see in a second semester calculus class, and that is the antiderivative of 1 over x to the n plus 1, where n is really any natural number. And we're going to use the following tool that relates the logarithm with the inverse tangent. And we're also going to use some stuff about complex numbers, mostly coming from Euler's formulas and, well, related versions of that. Okay, so let's get into this first bit right here. So what we'll start with is setting w equal to the arctan of z. And then we'll show that w is also equal to, well, notice it'll be 1 over 2 times i times that logarithm. Now, I'd like to point out that both of these functions in the complex world are multi-valued, and we're not really going to touch on that too carefully here. Okay. So observe that if we've got w equals arctan of z, that means that z equals the tangent of w. But then in turn, that means that i times z is equal to i times the sine of w over the cosine of w. I multiplied by i. And then I can also multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2 and I've achieved these formulas down here for 2 cosine theta and 2i sine theta in terms of complex exponentials. So in particular, what we have is i times z is equal to e to the i w minus e to the minus i w over e to the i w plus e to the minus i w. But now we can do a simplifying multiplication here by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by e to the i w. So let's see. That'll leave us with e to the 2 i w minus 1 over e to the 2 i w plus 1. And now we've got an equation that perhaps we could solve for e to the 2 i w. So cross multiplying, we have e to the i z times e to the 2 i w plus i z equals e to the 2 i w minus 1. Then we'll move everything with an e to the 2 i w to the left and everything without to the right. So that's going to leave us with e to the 2 i w times i z uh, minus 1 equals negative i z minus 1. So something that looks like that. But of course, that tells us that e to the 2iw equals iz minus 1, sorry, minus iz minus 1 over iz minus 1. Now, at this stage, what we'll do is multiply uh, the numerator and the denominator by i and see what happens. So if we do that, in the numerator, we'll end up with a z minus i. I think that's pretty clear. Minus i times i is minus negative 1, if you will, which is plus 1. And in the denominator, we have minus z minus uh, i. But then, of course, we can maybe factor out a minus sign from the numerator and the denominator, leaving us with i minus z up top and i plus z down bottom. But now observe, we've got e to the 2iw equals this rational function. Taking logarithms and moving things around, that takes us exactly to our statement right here. Okay, so now that we've achieved this formula, let's see how we can do the next step. Okay, so the next step will be to start on the long journey of doing a partial fraction decomposition of this integrand. So that's going to start with a couple of facts. First, x to the 2n minus 1 is equal to x to the n minus 1 times x to the n plus 1. So I think that's pretty clear. And then also, if we set omega equal to, um, let's see, e to the i 2 pi over 2n, which is e to the i pi over n, then that's a so-called primitive 2nth root of unity. So in other words, omega to the 2n is equal to 1, and any lower power of omega is not equal to 1. But that actually gives us a factorization of this x to the 2n minus 1. So we know x to the 2n minus 1 factors like x minus 1, x minus omega, 
x minus omega squared all the way up x minus omega to the 2n minus 1, x minus omega to the 2n. Okay, so now furthermore, we can similarly factor x to the n minus 1 as x minus 1, x minus omega squared. Observe that since we've got n here and 2n here, we use exactly half of the omegas, and it's all the even powers, all the way up to x minus omega to the 2n. But then using the fact that x to the n plus 1 is really their quotient, that tells us this nice factorization of x to the n plus 1 as x minus omega, x minus omega cubed, x minus omega to the fifth, all the way up x minus omega to the 2n minus first. It's all the odd roots, if you will. But then that motivates us to have the following shape for our partial fraction, fraction decomposition. So we've got one over x to the n plus one should decompose as a one over x minus omega, and then maybe plus a two, or maybe we'll call it a three over x minus omega cubed, all the way up a two n minus one over x minus omega to the two n minus one. And now we just have to figure out those a's. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so on the last board, we motivated the following partial fraction decomposition, which I've written as a sum here in summation notation. And uh, now what we'll do is essentially multiply both sides by x to the n plus one. So that leaves us a one over here, and then we'll have an x to the n plus one over here. But now notice if we think about this fraction over here as being canceled, this x to the n plus 1 over x minus omega to the k, then we can say that this really it's a polynomial after cancellation has roots at, well, it's going to be omega, omega cubed, all the way up to omega to the 2n minus 1, but not uh, omega to the k. Whichever spot we're at is no longer a root. So what we'll do here is, well, we'll just plug in that omega to the k, and that'll give us the value of a k. Or maybe we should plug in omega m, since here we're using this k as like uh, an index. Okay, so let's plug in and I'll put it in quotes, omega to the m. So let's see, that's gonna collapse this to uh, one equals a sub m times x to the n plus one over x minus omega to the m evaluated at x equals omega to the m. Now, I guess the best way to do this evaluation is use the fact that this will cancel and doing the evaluation since it's continuous there is the same thing as taking a limit. So this is in fact equal to a m times the limit as x approaches omega to the m of x to the n plus one over x minus omega to the m. But now looking at it like this, it's an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. So we can use L'Hopital's rule so taking the derivative of the numerator as well as the denominator, we'll have n x to the n minus 1 over 1 nominally. So that means here we're going to get what? So we're going to have a sub m times n times, well, it's going to be x to the n minus 1 plugging in omega to the m. So that's going to give us omega to the n to the m power times omega to the minus m using some exponent rules there. But let's observe that this omega to the n is, well, it's exactly equal to negative 1 because this omega to the n based off of what omega was, let's recall that um, omega was e to the i pi over n. So this is e to the i pi, but that equals negative 1. And then let's also recall that m is an odd number. So since m is an odd number, if you take this whole thing, you'll get negative 1. So in other words, here we have negative a m times n 
times omega to the minus m. But check it out. We've got 1 is equal to all of that. But that gives us a nice way of solving for our coefficient a sub m as it's going to be minus, let's see, it's going to be minus omega to the m over n. Notice we move the omega to the minus m to the other side. That's how the exponent becomes positive. But we still keep this minus sign here. Okay, so that gives us a path for doing this decomposition. And, well, let's use that to maybe get pretty close to the end. Okay, so this is a result of where we ended up. We did this partial fraction decomposition to this object right here. So notice we got a minus 1 over n out front. And then we've got omega over x minus omega, omega cubed over x minus omega cubed, and so on and so forth. So observe that those antiderivatives are fairly straightforward. We have minus 1 over n in front of the whole thing, and then omega n times the logarithm of x minus omega plus omega cubed times the logarithm of x minus omega cubed plus all the way up to omega to the 2n minus 1, and then the logarithm of x minus omega to the 2n minus 1. But notice that there are complex numbers floating around all over the place here, and, well, we would like to simplify that a little bit. And, in fact, we can simplify it by pairing some things off, and what we'll pair off is, well, we'll kind of fold it right down the middle. So we'll pair these two together, the omega term and the omega to the 2n minus 1 term, and then, well, all of the other pairs together as well. So the omega cubed and the omega to the 2n minus 3, and then so on and so forth. And what I'd like to note while we do that is that if we have m an odd number, then omega to the 2n minus m is, in fact, simply omega to the minus m. That's because omega to the 2n is 1, given that that's a primitive 2nth root of unity. And then let's also recall by the definition of the complex exponential here, we have omega to the m is cosine pi m over n plus i sine pi m over n, whereas omega to the minus m is cos pi m over n minus i sine pi m over n. Okay, so that'll be helpful. But now, well, let's look at the paired off things from this expression right here. Like I said, we were going to. So if we take omega m log x minus omega m, and then plus omega minus m times the log of x minus omega minus m. So that's what we're doing here. But observe that these omega type terms are both attached to a cosine. So let's take the cosine contribution and observe that after the cosine contribution, we have the sum of these two logarithms. But the sum of the logarithms will give us a product of what's on the inside. So we have the log of x minus omega to the m times x minus omega to the minus m. And then observe that if we look at the imaginary part, the stuff attached to a sine, then this first term is attached to a plus because of this equation. The second term is attached to a minus because of that equation. Then we'll have the difference of the logarithms, which will give us a quotient. So that'll be plus i times sine uh, of our pi times m over n times the logarithm of, let's see, x minus omega to the m over x minus omega to the minus m. So something like that. And now let's start simplifying each of these. So let's maybe uh, focus on this one first right here. So we've got this, uh, let's maybe color code it. This pink underlined thing is in fact equal to the log of, so it's going to be x squared, and then it's going to be minus omega m plus omega minus m times x, and then plus 1. It's plus 1 because, well, we're taking the product of, well, really two uh, inverses, with both with minus signs. 
But now let's notice that this omega m plus omega minus m, well, by this formula right here is exactly equal to two times the cosine of pi m over n. So here we can write that here, two cosine pi m over n. So that's cool. That gets all of that in terms of a real of real numbers. And now we just have to focus on the other one. But let's maybe hold on to this half of the formula right here and then do that on a clean board. So after folding this expression right here, we saw that it broke kind of cleanly into two parts. One we just worried about and we just took care of. And then the second one right here involving the logarithm of this quotient. But now I want to simplify this a little bit. So observe that this is the log of x minus. We know that this omega uh, to the m is cosine pi m over n minus i sine pi m over n. And then we know the denominator is x, let's see, minus a cosine pi m over n plus i sine a pi m over n. But now let's observe that we can factor a sign out of the numerator and the denominator of this logarithm. So that's gonna leave us with something like this. We have x minus our cosine pi m over n over our sine pi m over n, and then minus i, and then all in the denominator, we have x minus our cosine of pi m over n over our sine of pi m over n plus i. But now this looks, well, it looks pretty close to this formula over here. Notice that the kind of only difference is a multiple of negative one in the argument. But in fact, because of weirdness of the complex exponential, that means that this object right here differs from this object right here simply by a constant. But since it differs by a constant, we're doing an antiderivative, which is equivalent up to a constant, we kind of don't have to worry about it. And in fact, we won't. So that means that this whole thing is 2i arctan of whoever's playing the role of z over here, which we can see is this x minus cosine over sine term. So we have x minus the cosine of pi m over n over the sine of pi m over n. But now that's attached to an i, so you might think that we still have complex numbers here, but if you recall, this term right here was attached to an i in our kind of earlier formula. So let's insert that back into our earlier formula and we'll have our kind of final answer. Okay, so inserting everything back into one of our earlier formulas, we have our final solution. So observe that our antiderivative here is minus one over n, and then we've got this sum over odd terms between one and two times n minus one. We've got this cosine term times a logarithm of a quadratic, and then this sine type term uh, times an inverse tangent. And that's a good place to stop.